Welcome to iLecture Online. Our next problem deals with nuclear fusion reactions. And in particular, we have a helium particle being imparted on a nitrogen isotope resulting in an oxygen isotope and a hydrogen atom. All right, normally when that happens, you would think that all the energy comes from the incoming particle, and that's of course typically correct. And then we usually assume that all the energy is converted into the energy needed for the nuclear reaction. But that is not correct, and this is where this problem is slightly different from what we'd normally call a more simplistic problem that we would find in the textbook. So let's read the problem and see how to work this. The minimum kinetic energy needed by an alpha particle to cause the nuclear reaction, nitrogen plus helium gives you oxygen plus hydrogen, in the laboratory frame, and it's in N, MEVs. Now MEV stands for million electron volts, so we need a certain number of millions of electron volts to make that happen. Assume that nitrogen, 16,7, is at rest in the laboratory frame. The masses respectively can be taken to be 16.006, 4.003, 1.008, and 19.003 respectively, where you the atomic mass unit is equivalent to 930 MeV per C squared. So that's the energy conversion of, uh, or the mass conversion of an atomic mass unit. So we're looking for the value of N. Again, if we draw a quick pictorial, so what we can say is that we have a nitrogen at rest and we have a helium particle that moves at a very high speed towards the nitrogen and makes that happen. So it comes in with a kinetic energy one half m initial v initial squared. So that's the kinetic energy. So normally we assume that all that kinetic energy is used to cause a nuclear reaction to occur. But that's not necessarily the case because, well, let's see here, part of it is going to be absorbed by the nitrogen and it's going to move as well. We have to take into account the conservation momentum. So here we can say that P initial equals P final. And that in that case we have one half, oh, no, no, this is not kinetic energy. So it would be the mass of the helium times initial velocity of the helium plus the mass of the nitrogen times the initial velocity of the nitrogen. And I'll just go like this. Must equal the two combined M plus M times V final. And of course they told us that the nitrogen does not have any velocity initially, so that goes to zero. And so finally we can say that V final is equal to V initial times the ratio of M divided by M plus M. Now, little m is the mass of the helium, the alpha particle, and big M is the mass of the nitrogen. And notice that we can see that the mass of the nitrogen is four times the mass of the helium, very, very close to four times. So we can say that V final equals V initial times, uh, let's say uh, this would be four times, so we have M divided by M plus 4M, which is equal to V initial, uh, that would be M divided by 5M, and of course the M's cancel out, and you're left with V final equals one-fifth V initial. So that means that there's still some kinetic energy left after the helium hits the nitrogen, it's only the lost energy that's converted into the, the energy needed for the nuclear reaction. So, then, we, then now we have to calculate how much energy we need for the nuclear reaction. And so we need to look for the mass difference. How much mass has been lost? So the delta M or the lost mass is equal to the initial mass, which is the mass of the two particles together, which is 16.006U plus 4.003U. And subtract from that these two, which is 1.008U plus 19.003U. I'm running out of room here. Okay, so that means that the mass loss, that would be 20.009U minus, that would be 20.011U. So you can see that the mass loss is equal to 0 0.002 atomic mass units. And then we want to find the equivalent energy, so energy needed, energy needed, for the nuclear reaction 
is equal to uh, the mass, delta M, times 930 MeV per uh, atomic mass unit, because that's going to be in atomic mass units. So in this case, it's going to be 0 0.002 multiplied times 930 MeVs, MeVs, like that. And so two times that, that gives us 186, and the decimal place is over here. So 1.86 MeVs is the amount of energy needed to make the reaction to occur. Now, here is the danger. You may think, oh, I found the answer. It's 1.86 and put it there, but you would be wrong if you did that because remember that you need additional kinetic energy because some of the kinetic energy goes into moving both of the objects together after the collision. Only four-fifths of the available kinetic energy can be used. So, that means that because one-fifth, that's lost, right? So we can say, oh, well, actually, we don't know that yet. Now we have to go to kinetic energy. So kinetic energy initial is equal to one-half mv initial squared. m being the mass of the alpha particle, v being the initial velocity of the alpha particle. Kinetic energy final is the two particles together moving away, so it would be one-half times the combined mass, m plus 4m, that would be the total mass of the helium nucleus and the nitrogen particle together, times V final squared. And remember that V final is one-fifth V initial. So here we can say that kinetic energy final is equal to one-half times 5M. Now we have five times the mass from before, but we have V final squared divided by 25 because V final is V initial, oh, that would be V initial squared, sorry, V initial squared divided by 25, it's one-fifth V initial squared, gives us V initial squared divided by 25, and then we can say that kinetic energy final is equal to one-fifth, one-half MV initial squared. So here you can see that, yes indeed, we ended up with one-fifth left over from the, kinetic, from the initial kinetic energy, which means that four-fifths of the original kinetic energy is used to provide the energy for the nuclear reaction. That means that the initial kinetic energy needed to cause that to happen is five over four times the energy needed because one-fifth was lost due to the, or one-fifth is remaining and we only can utilize four-fifths, only four-fifths was lost. And so therefore, kinetic energy initial is equal to 5 over 4 times the 1.86 MeVs. So 5 times this, that would be 9.3, so we have 9.3 MeVs divided by 4, and so that would be equal to 4 goes, that would be 2, that gives me 1, that would be 3, that gives me 110, that gives me 2, 5 MeVs. Kinetic energy initial, and so that needs to be rounded to three decimal, two decimal places, so we can say that kinetic energy initial is equal to 2.33 MeVs, which is equal to N, and that is the minimum kinetic energy necessary in order to make the reaction take place, because remember we lost, we kept one-fifth of the original kinetic energy to keep the two objects moving, four-fifths was lost, and the four-fifths of that is used to provide 1.86 million electron volts. And that is how it's done. How long did that take? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Hey, I'm improving. Pass <laughs> <laughs> <is> over. <laughs>